All right, so this one was, I believe, from 2018. We got two polar curves, R equals four, just a circle uh, at the origin. And R equals three plus two cosine theta, which is just a limosome that's got that little dimple in it. All right, we should have known what these graphs look like. It should extend mostly in the quadrants where cosine is positive because it's a plus cosine of the limosome. Um, out five units because three plus two is five and one unit to the left of the pole because three minus two is one. Um, gives us intersection points. Thank you very much, College Board. That makes life easier. Um, we've got the region R, that is the shaded region inside of the circle but outside the limosome. We want an expression with an integral to find the area of R. And didn't say anything about evaluating it, so you don't need to bother to evaluate it. Um, so our first intersection point there is pi over three. Our second intersection point is star pi over three. And our formula here for these should be one half the integral from the first angle to the second angle of the outer radius. And our outer function here is four, so four squared, minus our inner function, which was three plus two cosine theta squared d theta. Um, that was hopefully easy enough. Yeah. Um, one point out here for the constants and the limits, two points for having the appropriate integrate. All right, part B of this one says we want to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph at pi over two, right? So slope of the line tangent to three plus two cosine theta at two, no, sorry, at pi over two. So um, all we need to do here is go in and find dy dx, which should be dy d theta over dx d theta. So y should be r sine theta. X should be r cosine theta. And dy d theta should be just the derivative of that. Um, if we want to, we could simplify this out to be three sine theta plus sine two theta to start with. And we could simplify this out to be three cosine theta plus two cosine squared theta. Um, so dy d theta should be three cosine theta plus two cosine two theta and dx d theta should be negative three sine theta plus actually it's going to be a minus um, so four cosine theta times negative sine theta so minus four cosine theta sine theta and dy dx is this over this. We're evaluating that at, what did we say, theta equals pi over two? So um, if theta is pi over two, the cosine of pi over two is zero. So that's zero. And then the cosine of pi is negative one. So we got two cosine of negative one, or sorry, two cosine of pi, which is negative two. And then in our denominator, three sine, negative three sine pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one, so that's negative three. And then cosine of pi over two is zero, so that whole second term goes away, and we end up with two thirds. Good there. Thank you. 
Um, that one is worth three points. They showed it a little bit different way. Um, where they just write y is r sine theta and x is r cosine theta and writing out the like you know, dr d theta sine theta plus r cosine theta and dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta and actually finding what dr d theta is but that's fine you would have gotten one point for having the appropriate thing for dy d theta one for dx d theta and one for the final answer All right, and part C. All right, part C, we've got a particle moving, only, moving along the portion of the curve from zero to pi over two. Um, the distance between the particle and the origin is increasing at a constant rate of three units per second. We want to find the rate at which the angle theta is changing at the time when the position of the particle is theta equals pi over three. Um, so the distance between the particle and the origin is increasing at a constant rate. Uh, so we're talking about the dr dt is three. And then we are looking for the rate at which the angle changes with respect to time. So we are looking at trying to find the theta dt. Um, and so in order to do this one, we're going to just use the chain rule here. We're going to say that the derivative of r with respect to t should be the derivative of r with respect to theta times the derivative of theta with respect to t, right? That's just, just probably take the derivative um, and if we're taking the derivative of r with respect to t, we can break that down into the derivative of r with respect to theta times the derivative of theta with respect to t. And so we should be able to figure out what all of those things are. Um, if r is equal to 3 plus 2 cosine theta, then dr d theta ought to just be negative 2 sine theta. And if we want to find d theta dt, that's what we're looking for, right? Yeah. It should just be dr dt over dr d theta evaluated when theta is was it pi over three? And that should be d theta dt. So dr dt is three, dr d theta is negative two sine of theta or negative two sine pi over three. So that should be our d theta dt. And our sine of um, for sine of pi over three ought to be root three over two. So we end up with three over negative two root three over two, which is negative three over root three is just negative root three. And uh, we're talking radians per second here. I think it was per second. That was in where three units per second yeah so radians per second good or no questions on that one um yeah i can explain the setup again so you just mean like this this right here that's just the chain rule so um if i want to find the derivative of r with respect to t well r is all in terms of theta right so if i'm trying to take the derivative of that thing with respect to t i can't do that unless i take the derivative of it with respect to theta and then multiply that by the derivative of theta with respect to t that's just like you know implicit differentiation Right, I'm trying to 
differentiate both sides of it with respect to t. So dr d theta is the derivative of that with respect to theta. I'm sorry, dr dr d t, the derivative of this with respect to t. I take the derivative of this side with respect to t. Means I take its derivative with respect to theta and multiply it by the derivative of theta with respect to t. It's just implicit differentiation. Um, I think radians per second delphine is better, um, but yeah, I mean they didn't ask for units, so even leaving off the units, you'd be fine anyway. But I don't think they asked for units. Oh, they did ask for units. Yeah, then definitely put radians per second. Yeah, if we're talking about how an angle is changing, it should always be radians per time period. Or degrees if something is actually done in degrees, but that's highly unlikely. So. Any other questions on that one? All right. I think this one might have been a little bit more difficult. So this is the calculator one. Given two regions, R and S, um, and then they give you the functions for both of them. And we want to first find the area of R. So for R, um, and it says we're talking zero to pi over two. So in order to find the area of R, it's just this one half of the integral from zero to pi over two of our out of our outer, wow, of our oh, is it f function, right? One plus sine theta cosine. 2 theta squared d theta, and what is that going to have to be? 0.648. And that was one point for the correct setup and one point for the correct answer. Everybody uh, good there? Um, always three decimals or more, Ryan. Always three decimals or more. <laughs> yeah. Never less than three decimals unless for some reason it specifically tells you to like round to, you know, sometimes they'll say like round to the nearest whole number for like a real world thing, like, hey, I can have point two seven eight people. So other than that, it should always be rounded to three decimals. <clears throat> All right. Um, so now we've got our ray, some ray theta equals k for k between zero and pi over two, takes s and divides it into two regions of equal area. Um, so just s that's being divided into two regions of equal area, not the whole s and r. We want to write but not solve an equation involving one more integral. So we have a solution that finds k. So we just throw some ray through there. I mean, that looks like that's probably about right. If this is theta equals k, well, the entire area of S should be an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the outer function, which now I don't remember what it was, or the outer function, just 2 cosine theta. So 2 cosine theta squared, one half of this, minus the inner one, which was 1 plus sine theta cosine 2 theta. Squared d theta. So that's, um, that's the area of the entirety uh, 
small test. And so, what should we set that equal to? Mm, not 0 0.648. 0 0.648 is our area of R, right? We want we want S to be two regions of equal area. So what we need is we need uh, 0.923. Where where are you getting 0 0.9? Is that what that is that that equals? Okay, so this is the area of the entire region, right? Everybody agree that's the entire the area of the entire region. So we want half of that to equal the area from zero to k of the same integrand there, one half of two cosine theta squared minus one plus sine theta cosine two theta squared d theta. So this is the area from zero to k. And this is half of the total area. So if half of the total area equals the area from zero to k, then that should be the integral that we're looking for. Does that make sense? You could have also done zero to k of um, g of theta squared minus f of theta squared minus k to pi over 2 of the same thing would have also worked. Oh, that's what you got for the value of s. So yeah. yeah, so you take half of the value of s. And, but you don't, need to, you don't even need to do that. It just says write an expression involving integrals. So we don't even need to actually evaluate any of it. Like this answer right here is good enough. Um, oh, and points for this, one point for this and one point for the actual like equation setting the two things equal to each other. Everybody good with that or no? I'll assume that's not everybody's good with it since no one's answering. All right, part C, we've got for each theta from zero to pi over two, W is the distance between the points F of theta, theta, and G of theta, theta. So the distance between F and G and Hold on, let's see. Do you not do that well? In, and we're not asked for this. So, so last time they had us write it in like, um, they were having us do it in sort of like a in rectangular coordinates, right? And figuring out the value of the slope. Um, but here it's just asking us this is theta equals some angle, right? So it's already, I mean, it's already got the slope built into it. So we're just looking for k, and k is the theta value that we can integrate to. The slope wasn't a a value we could integrate to, so we had to find the value of that slope by doing the inverse tangent. Is that, is that good now? Mm. 
Okay. All right, so part C says we've got W of theta. W of theta is the distance between F and G. Um, and so we should be able to write an expression for W of theta, W of theta. should equal our outer function, which was g, right? That was the circle was g, right? g of theta minus f of theta. And if we're just looking for the average value of that on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, that's just the mean value of the for integrals. So that's just an integral from, or it's 1 over pi over 2 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of our g of theta minus our f of theta, d of theta. And I think they asked us this time to find the actual value. So what does that come out to be? 485. That sound right to everybody? So one point for this, one point for the correct integral, and one point for the answer. Good or no? All right, part D, using the information from part C, find the value of theta for which um, W of theta equals that average value. So we want to know when does W of theta equal whatever we just got. Um, and then we want to know, is the function w of theta increasing or decreasing at that value? So what do we get? We got 0.485. So we want to know, when does w of theta equal 0.485? And so that's um, easy enough. You've got, a, I mean, you've got a calculator for that. So you could just type in the functions um, and Set them equal to each other on your graphing calculators, solve for the intersection point. And I believe that came out to be theta equals 0.518. And that was one point uh, for correctly solving that. And then we wanted to know if the value. Uh, sorry, if the function w of theta is increasing or decreasing at that value. So we're just looking at w prime of theta. So we want to find out what is w prime of 0.518. w prime of 0.518 was negative, and therefore the value of w is decreasing because its derivative is negative. Does that make sense to everybody or no? And that was one point up there and one point down here for, this, for the answer with the reason. Good or no? Any questions there? You guys do okay with those ones in general? Not bad, wonderful. 